Today's video is another one of those crazy viral videos from Instagram called the snail roll that you guys asked me to do a video on. So I'm gonna show you how to make it, why you might wanna use it, the benefits, the downsides, what material you should use, what seeds it's gonna work for, you know the whole drill. And of course, all with science. Okay, so the infamous snail roll is in short a longer tube-like structure that is simply rolled up and has soil in the middle. Now, the benefit to this, obviously, is that we don't have trays, we don't have breakable plastic, and the actual outside material you can use can be literally anything, but we'll get into maybe things you wanna think about here in a little bit when you choose your, your rolling layer, I guess you could call it. I don't know. Two big reasons why you would want to use this. If you watch my video on how to make plants that are drought tolerant and the fact that this year we are going into a drought year, if you look at the drought map, it's a very clear indication that that's our future. This is a great idea because in that we discussed root trainers, longer roots rather than roots that go off to the side horizontally. We want more vertical growth. This will achieve that depending on how long you make this, how much soil you put in, that sort of thing. So this is a cheat way to do a root trainer. Number two actually is that the seedlings themselves can be bumped up relatively easy, meaning the separation of the different root hairs is gonna be much gentler and easier than if you had it in a clump formation. And then obviously you can move them out of the cells without them getting tangled in the bottom kind of crease area. You guys know what I'm talking about. And you hear pop, pop, pop when you go to rip them out. Not that the popping's a big deal, but obviously it's going to limit that if you have this method. Downsides. Downsides are that some seeds are not gonna go well in this and we'll talk about why here in a little bit. Another downside is that the actual volume of soil is pretty small. Now when I did this, I did a pretty thick roll but I've seen them very, very thin. Not that this is an issue. If you're just using this for seed starting and then once you get three to four true leaves, you're bumping up, fine, by all means. But if you know you're not gonna have time to bump up within two to three weeks of planting your plants, or if you know that you're gonna go on holidays or whatever the case is, this is not the greatest uh, idea because there's not enough potting soil, soilless medium, to actually retain that much water, meaning there's no real battery reserve in this and capillary action through bottom watering is going to be limited, mostly because capillary action does, it, particularly when you get heights involved, really truly does rely on gravity. So gravity will affect capillary action. The taller your soil profile is, I guess that's what this is. And so capillary action isn't reliant, so you couldn't bottom water with this. Now, that leads me into the last one, which is this is not just going to stand up in a seed tray, it is going to fall over. So you might need to use a cup or if you're particularly crafty, maybe you can smush it down and make it stand up on its own, but it's gonna be very difficult. So I'm using a cup in this uh, for this one, but you can use various different things. Just obviously not your classic seed trays. Now, when it comes to choosing the rolling material, I used wax paper. There's a reason for that. Wax paper is a plastic, it's a wax, it's a wax material, and therefore evapotranspiration, which is a big fancy word for water loss from the system, that is this little ecosystem here, is lower than it would be if you were to use cloth or burlap or something of that nature, which is common. I've seen them snail rolls made with that and there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to be conscious of the fact that if you're not the person that watches their seedlings every day and makes sure that everyone's happy and healthy, not the greatest. You, you'd you wanna go with more of a wax or a plastic. I, you guys know I'm ridiculously busy all the time. So this wax, that's what I'm going with because that's the easy one to deal with. But if you wanted to use something that is breathable, that increases the rates of evapotranspiration, you will of course have where we discussed root pruning or air pruning on the sides, you'll have some results of that on the outer layers, not the inner layers, but the outer layer seedlings, which 
can be beneficial, again, in a drought year or in a scenario where you want higher volume of root. The next one is your soil. So this one, I would absolutely use seed starting mix. I would not use a classic potting soil. You want this thing to retain as much moisture as possible because there is not much soil in there. There's not much water retention that can take place. So wherever we can fit water, we want to, and that means no perlite or limited volumes of perlite. Vermiculite's not gonna work in this sense because again, the water holding capacity is lower than that of a potting soil. So potting soil is uh, seed starting mix in particular is kind of the only thing you can go with here. Now, if you're going for smaller seeds, you could do a thinner layer. If you're going for larger seeds, you may want to do a larger area. And then conversely, if you want something that's gonna be potted up relatively quickly, then thinner layer, if you want something that's going to last and stay in situ in here for longer periods of time, you may wanna go thicker. The key is that whatever you choose to do in regards to thickness is that it is completely saturated before you put it in here. You want it sopping wet because like I said, capillary action's not gonna work great right in this. You're gonna be relying heavily on capillary from the bottom maybe, but mostly gravity feeding down. And because there's no real structure to this, it's going to be difficult to ensure that all the water is directed into the soil system evenly and equally. So you could end up with dead spots if this is not per like very well saturated before you make your roll. I personally did a thicker layer. Uh, the reason for that is the seeds that I'm growing. And I also want to capture that benefit of root training, if you will. So. Root training benefit, or the benefit of the snail roll, one of the benefits of the snail roll is those longer roots. And that cannot be achieved if the plant doesn't stay inside of the container long enough to allow that to happen. And so therefore you want enough soil in here that you're gonna be able to leave your seeds in long term where you can actually root, uh, get develop a root system that will work for you. Now, when it comes to seeds, you, can start anything in here. If you watch the video on seed depth, the Geek Crew already knows the drill, but the seed size is highly reliant on the amount of light said seed needs to survive and thrive. So smaller seeds like basils and tomatoes and peppers need more light and need to be planted more on the surface. This is a great, a choice to put into the snail roll because when we seed the snail roll, all we're doing is doing a light scattering on the soil surface. In many cases, we don't even have to top this with any more potting soil. You could literally just give it a, a nice massage and the seeds will kind of fall in as needed or you could water, do a light watering on top and that will force the seeds down enough where you're going to they'll be planted and they're gonna grow. Now the seeds you may wanna use some caution with are going to be the larger seeds. So the melons, the squash, loofah, um, beans, peas, sweet peas, things of that nature, something that needs to be planted at a deeper depth only because you would need to actually seed place, like place the seed before you roll. So while this is kind of rolled out, you would find the middle section and then pop those seeds in at like the three inch mark and then you would roll it up and fingers crossed the seeds don't shift too much during the fruit roll up process and you should be off to the races. The actual height you go with, I mean, it's highly dependent on what you're trying to achieve. If you just wanna achieve easy separation of the seedlings, you really don't have to go for something of this depth. If you want to get the root training benefit of the snail roll, then you might want to actually make something a little bit longer. I wouldn't exceed over eight, nine inches. That's what she said. <laughs> because the fact that it, the capillary and the gravity the watering 
It could be difficult. It may be difficult. And then for the humidity, because many, many plants rely on humidity to germinate, you might want to choose to actually just put a plastic cup. So you just put another cup over top of this to allow that to uh, take place. Or you can get those really high dome cloches that would work in this uh, sense that will help with that germination process and just speed it up so that they're not in here too long that the soil begins to dry out and get like those hydrophobic spots, all that fun stuff. Does the snail roll win? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's really cool. I think whoever invented this is genius. It's inexpensive. You can use any material you want and they're is some science to justify why you may choose to use this over a regular seed starting cell. So give it a shot. Let me know if you've used the snail, snail, the snail roll, the snail roll before, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.